What's up, guys? Thank you for listening to Talking Fit. I'll give you the quick spiel that I give you every single time. If you like the episode, if you feel it brings you value, just please share it to Instagram story, send the link to your friends. If you want to be super awesome, leave a five-star review and a rating. Or if you think it's complete shit, which I know you probably won't, just let me know why and what I can do to make it better. Uh, today, I have a uh, very special guest, uh, Cody McBroom. If you don't know who he is, you should absolutely be following him on Instagram, and we'll go over where you can find more of his stuff at the end of the podcast. But he's coached hundreds of people. He leads a team of awesome coaches who also coach hundreds of people. The name of his company is Tailored Coaching Method. He also owns uh, Tailored Life Apparel, which is an apparel line, and uh, the Tailored Coaching app, which is a app on your phone that programs all your workouts for you. Uh, it's super ambitious uh, guy full of tattoos like me. Uh, we're very similar in a few ways, but um, we'll kind of get into that more and more in the podcast. So hope that was a good intro, Cody. Thanks for hopping on. I love it, man. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Uh, thank you for having me on, bro. I really appreciate it, man. I, I know you're super busy. I know you're in the middle of a big move with your business, a lot of big things going on. So taking time of your day to hop on this is it really means a lot. Yeah, absolutely. I'm always happy to do these. It's a, it's a, a gift and a curse when you're, you have such a crazy schedule, you know, it's like, um, it's difficult to squeeze things in, but at the same mm -hmm. time, like I always make a priority to do it. Cause I love connecting and I love doing stuff like this. And ultimately that's what allows all of it to grow. And that's what, that's the only reason my schedule is busy is because, you know, doing shit like this. So I, I love it. Yeah. You, you mentioned this, uh, I've obviously like no one knows this type of stuff, but like, uh, I did a seminar that Cody and a friend of his named Brad Jensen, who's also someone you should be following, uh, the sober bodybuilder on Instagram. Uh, they ran a business seminar in uh, out by Seattle in Washington, which is where C Cody lives. And I went out there in September and we, uh, me, Brad and Cody and a, a couple other trainers actually went out to dinner on that Saturday night. And you, we were kind of talking kind of off the side and you're mentioning how it's funny when you see fitness pros are like posting on their Instagram story all the time. And you're like, I feel guilty. Like, I don't have the time to be doing this. And then you're like, oh, but they're probably just not actually like, working <laughs> all day. Yeah. So it's funny that you say that because today was just like a crazy busy day. It's 2 p.m. here. And I've been like up since 4 a.m. Just pretty much nonstop all day. And I remember I had a moment like around 1130. I was like, shit, I didn't do anything on social media today. And I probably should. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, I've had well, those days. And that's where like, I think, you know, at a certain point you get and this is like some Gary Vee shit, but at a certain point you get to to where you just have somebody else record stuff that you can use. You know what I mean? Like with Travis, it's the same thing. Like I'll be like, man, if you can just jump out of your office and get a random clip of me doing something or like, yo, like Andreas is going to be here where we're doing orders and stuff like sneak over and get some footage or, or whatever at some point, like, because you just don't, you know, you have very minimal time to actually do that. And then when you have time to like be on your story, nothing exciting is going on. Like I'm, Oh yeah. I've been sitting here at my desk this whole morning, just, just working and having meetings and, and sending out client work and just doing different things. So it's like, yeah, real business doesn't doesn't live on Instagram. I think a lot of people forget that. Yeah, and I, I I'm kind of like my business is is at a point where yours probably was years ago, but I still operate like a, like 100 percent out of my home. So I don't have an office to go to, but I also have a two year old son. So like during the day, sometimes we don't use daycare. So like during the day, sometimes not only is it like. Uh, just sitting on the computer typing or, you know, coaching a client. I still do some in-person coaching, but it's like, then I'm just like feeding my son lunch or something like that. Like it's nothing really sexy to, to get it on camera and put on Instagram story. Mm -hmm. And that dude, that's a, that's a respectful feat in itself. It's, it's very difficult to run, uh, to, to have a healthy business inside your home while having a, a toddler or an infant there, oh, you know, dude. Like it's, it's tough. It's tough to stay because uh, I got a four year old. Uh, she'll be five in a few months, um, two months, actually. God damn. And uh, oh, wow. they uh, if, if I'm working from home, it ain't happening, you know, because it's just like, especially as they start getting older and they can start moving around more and easier and walk in and opening doors. And then you're like, yeah, this ain't happening. <laughs> I forgot how easy it was when he was like six months. Like I, yeah. I you're just in it all the time. But I forgot how easy it was. You just put him in a swing and he'd sit there for forever. And now, like, I, I you literally, like, I, my wife is upstairs with him right now, like on the opposite side of the house, just so there's no distraction mm -hmm. <laughs> on yep. the call. Um, but we kind of glossed over this part. Um, could you, you know, for people who may not have followed you or just hearing you for the first time, could you give us like a brief background on you, how you got into fitness and, and just kind of how you've gone from a dude who likes to work out to running a, a like a, a worldwide coaching company? 
Yeah. Oh man. That's a, I mean, it's a loaded question, obviously, but um, essentially man, I grew up the chubby kid and uh, I always have like, um, I'm a very creative person by nature. So like, uh, you know, it's, it's been, I have a, I've always had an entrepreneur spirit. Like, I mean, like my, uh, like I always joke and say like my first job was finding stuff that uh, hasn't been touched in the garage and selling it on Craigslist back when Craigslist was like safe for a 14 to 15 year old to use. Like I literally, did, like, <laughs> so shit, you know what I mean? Like I'd take my brother's old like bike or my dad's old barbecue. Like I was just selling stuff. And then, uh, eventually I just got sick of being overweight to be honest with you like I was never obese but I was always a chubby one and then after high school I got kind of sick of it and I was like you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna start losing weight and doing thing and in my creative entrepreneur spirit that always loved to draw and love tattoos and love music and love skateboarding and loved creative uh independent creative nature um Mm because the things I excelled in were very much so like me on my own doing my own thing I kind of just applied that to fitness you know I got really into fitness I lost about 50 pounds I shifted my degree over to study it Um, and then I just kind of like snowballed, man. I started just training people for free, getting more experience in the gym, meeting people, networking. I got an internship, the internship turned into a job. So I was a trainer for six and a half years there, six days a week, seven. If I was bored, I was just there on Sundays too, just lifting, hanging out with people. Um, and I was just, I've just been obsessed with it, man, ever since. And and that, that really like the only way I can describe is that hustler's mentality of just being so engulfed and obsessed in it. Um, which you know, I think, and there's all this is a common thing with a lot of entrepreneurs and successful people. Um, it pulled me away from a lot of bad stuff too. Like some of the people I was hanging out with and some of the places I was ending up in got me in some sticky situations. And um, I ended up actually getting jumped in uh, that like trip to the hospital and waking up with blood. Every, like it just, it was a scary moment. And, you know, the mm-hmm. nurse saying like, you're lucky to be alive kind of thing was kind of a light bulb for me to be like, you know what, like, I'm just going to put all my eggs in this basket and, you know, get like separate myself from this for, for a while. And uh, that allowed me to like go all in and it just kind of started snowballing, you know? And then uh, in 2017, I found out uh, my girlfriend at the time was pregnant. We were going to have a kid. And that's when I was like, okay, if I'm going to do this online thing that I've been dreaming about um, since day one, because like legitimately when I was 18 years old and I got an internship at a mm-hmm. gym, they asked me what I want to do. And I said, eventually I want to build a website that helps people with fitness around the world. And I don't know how it's going to make money, but <laughs> online coaching wasn't a thing. You didn't like aspire yeah. to be an online coach back then, um, but I'm going to do it. So I ended up uh, finally, you know, I, I literally like uh, put my two weeks in really I actually put three months in so that I could transition my clients. But over three months, I transitioned all my clients to other trainers until I had zero income from that gym. And I just stepped out on my own. Um, with a mortgage that was under my wife's name and she was about to go on maternity leave. And I was like, babe, you're never going back to work. I promise. And she's like, okay. <laughs> and uh, I made it happen. So she never went back and, and I just did, I just grinded and, and it built and built. And then I ended up hiring an assistant to help me manage things. And I hired a coach and then another coach and another coach. And it kind of just kept growing to where it is today. So, um, you know, right now we're, we're located South of Seattle. Um, we're in a facility. We're actually getting ready to move into a new facility that we're building um where we'll have full podcast studio full gym multiple offices like the whole thing and um yeah i mean that's what we do man we we coach people in fitness and nutrition around the world that's crazy man that's a, that's a, those are those are some things i didn't know about you like i didn't know about the, the getting jumped part that's crazy mm-hmm. were you already a trainer at that point i was yeah so that was like where i was that was, was when you're still... working for someone else yeah, I was a trainer. I just, I, I was a new trainer at, at a gym and uh, I was, I was in it, but I wasn't like all in, you know, I was still yeah. like in it from a standpoint of like, yeah, I want to do this for a living, but it's just dope that I get to lift and make like pay my rent kind of thing. You know, I like, I, yeah. I wasn't like, I wasn't doing much. I think I was 20 years old when it happened and I was at a party and a girl got, girl got hit in the face by a dude. And that's what like kind of set me off. And I Mm -hmm. just happened to be the first one walking out the door to like go, I mean, to be honest with you, (laughs) like confront the guy. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And uh, his friend was standing outside the door and hit me in the face with a a half gallon glass, half gallon as I walked out and just like, Oh my God. And then him and his friend proceeded to to kick me in the face. And and I just woke up just blood everywhere. My eyebrow was gone at like, it was bad dude I look like uh I joke and say I look like the thing from the Goonies <laughs> when uh, 
I got some gnarly pictures, but, um, but yeah, it was, it was a moment, man. It like, I think uh, like near death experiences kind of do wake people up, you know, and you, you realize like, yeah. man, this is, I got one, one chance that could be short, you know, and I got to make the most out of it. And to me, it was like, this is what I'm going to do. And, and I set on a path to create a company that was ran online in, in my whole, like, now it's changed over time, but I actually, we had a team meeting for the new year and I, and I said this to my team and it was like, you know, like we have a mission statement as a company. I think every individual on this team should have a mission statement and I have my own mission statement and my main mission statement is to create what I call the tailored life. It's why we have the tailored life podcast and tailored life apparel um, is to create the tailored life for each and every individual on this team to have financial freedom, to have sustainability, security, have freedom of schedule, to, to be able to do what they want for a living. Um, and to have that reassurance that like, you're living this life the way you decide to live it. Like that's an important factor for me. It's, it's how I operate, how I live my life. So I want to create that for them, you know, and it's been like the mission ever since. That's awesome, man. So like when you, when you, uh, first had the idea, like, I want to do like an online, uh, coaching company, like back before we knew what online coaching would be, um, what, I guess at the time, what was the, like the lure of doing that? Was it like the freedom of not having to be like in appointments all day, or was it more, I could have access to more people? It was, uh, it was a combination of things, you know, it was like, for me at the time, it was, uh, it was, it was re- building a reach beyond the, the little city I lived in, you know, mm-hmm. um, and then being able to travel the world. Like that was what I wanted to do. I wanted to travel the world and deliver fitness. Um, obviously, as soon as I had a kid, that changed. Now I'm a homebody. I don't want to go anywhere. Like the second I'm not Dude, working, I'm like, I, let me just cuddle up. <laughs> but it's so funny that you say that because uh, I know, like when I trans- transitioned more to online, my idea was like, oh, like I could work from anywhere, and like oh, this and that. And it's like, nah, I never leave home, and like, I'm always working from home, and. And uh, I, I think one of the, you know, the misconceptions about online coaching versus in-person coaching is that like with online coaching, people think like, oh, you don't really have to do as much. And that's kind of the lure of like a lot of the business coaching programs, like be an online coach and just like make X amount of money and just work from your laptop on a yeah. beach somewhere. And I've found that like the online is way more work than the in-person. Uh, the in-person is just more uh, like you know you have to trade your time for money but like with yeah. online i it can consu- i still do 18 hours of in-person coaching a week and i'm doing like double the amount of time doing online coaching like yeah. you know uh and promoting it and writing content so it is uh it's just one of those things in life where like the i think the initial lure of it sounds sexier on paper than what it ends up being yeah and that's the truth and i think that like for the most part you know it's it's the reality is, is that you can make a lot more money being an online coach, but you can also reach more people in, in honestly, you can help more people because you can make it cheaper. Like to work with me in person, like when I was finishing up being an in-person coach, like when I was doing private training, I mean, you had to pay a lot of money, like normal people. Like I had like some high up Amazon people in the city that would pay me to come out to their condo. And I'm talking like a lot of money. Yeah. Um, and normal people can't do that. So it's like, I can do that for a handful of people make good money, or mm-hmm. I can do online. And cause that's the only way I could create a, a sustainable lifestyle for myself and my family, or I can do this online thing and I can scale it and I can help way more people for less money. So they win, they get the same results. Cause you don't need me in person. Um, not everybody. Yeah. Some people do need that at first, you know, but it was, it was a way to be able to reach so many more people. And I think, you know, originally, and it was funny cause I remember, um, being in the interview uh, with Luca Hosovar, who owns uh, Very Good Ground Fitness Performance, and he, because uh, that was why I worked for a long time, and he's a really well-known strength coach, super smart guy, but he asked me, like, how are you going to make money? Because I was like, eventually, this is what I'm going to do. He's like, well, how are you going to make money? And my exact answer was like, well, I don't know, but Nate Green and Jay Frugia do it. And yeah. That was it's like, possible. nobody, yeah, and nobody did it back then, but I was like, I know they do something, and I love creating content because when I first lost 50 pounds, I was a broke college kid who worked at a, a, a pharmacy in the hood on the highway, dude. It was, I didn't have money to fucking hire a coach. So what oh, I did yeah. is I read T Nation forums. I read Jay Frugia's blog. I read Nate Green's blog. And I literally lost 50 pounds, transformed my life, improved my confidence. Like those guys transformed who I was as a, as a man just through mm-hmm. their blogs. So to me, I was like, man, I love creating and this allows me to reach people. And so I actually assumed that like, I eventually maybe I'll write a book or like maybe people pay at for like advertising on blogs. 
I don't, yeah. I don't know how to make money. Yeah. Eventually it led to coaching because he told me, you know, um, and this is a good like uh, tip for, for anybody who's new in their career. The guy who owned the gym looked at me and said, train people every day for five years straight. And then you'll have the right to do something like that. Cause that was to him. He was like, earn your stripes. If you want to be someone like that. And I was like, cool. Six and a half years later, I finally stepped out to do it. So it's like, you, you need to like put in the work, you know? And I think that to me, it was like, if I can create this, I can, I can essentially reach way more people and it can be more affordable, but I can transform people's lives on a level that those guys were able to do for me, but times 10, because I would actually be communicating with them, you know, and I've met, yeah. Nathan, I've met Christian Thibodeau, I've met Jay Frisian multiple times um, now, later, years later, but like, it allows us to do that. And, you know, speaking of travel and all that stuff, eventually I was like, you know what, like, and this is not a knock at anybody who loves to travel, but I got to a point where I was like, I can spend all this money and time and, and stuff and planning and, and energy on travel. And that's great. And there are places I want to see in the world eventually, but man, like if I, work my ass off and I create my dream home and I drive my dream car and I buy my wife her dream car and I have like my daughter's dream playroom and we have a big backyard I don't need to go anywhere I'm my gym yeah. I own is down the street so what do I like to do I, I'm a huge car guy I got a <laughs> truck I, I bought my wife my dream car because I didn't want to in my <laughs> truck I have a Harley like well I have an Indian but like a motorcycle like Blakely has her toy room. I'm like, man, I don't travel much, but the things I love and, uh, and, and I, I surround myself in as my environment, what I drive, where I sleep, the gym I go to, it's, it's the ideal scenario for me. And like, to me, that's, that's like my dream. That's what I wanted. And now I want to build that for, for my team, you know? No, I can, I can vibe with that on, on so many levels. And I think there's a, there's a few things that you touched on that can, can go beyond just business and just apply it to your day-to-day -day life. I think sometimes uh, when people are approaching, you know, I guess they related somehow to fitness and nutrition because that's where people listen to this type of stuff. Mm -hmm. But like, I think sometimes when people are going into a program or they're working with a coach or a diet, whatever it is, they approach it with the mindset of I'm doing this to get to from A to B and then I can go back to like my normal life, but feel different because I've lost weight now. And we don't, what they miss and what I try to do for my clients is like, no, no, we're creating a new environment for you to live in mm -hmm. so you appreciate it so much that yeah like like with travel the novelty of going out to eat and having a couple of drinks with friends is still there and you still enjoy it but that's not your every day now that's not your your burning passion is i'm just getting through the week to have my cheat meal or i'm getting through the work week to have my vacation on the weekend mm -hmm. and i think that's really powerful and i think in a lot of ways that's always kind of been the underlying driver in my life too is i don't want to work a job that I don't like. I don't want to work for someone else. I don't want to feel the need. Like I just got to get the hell out of this place, you know, to go somewhere better. So I, I totally relate to that on a lot of levels, man. And it's, it's just cool to hear you say that. Yeah, dude. I, I think, uh, I think at the end of the day, even for people who just want to lose weight, you have to not just visualize the goal, but visualize who you want to become, you know, and then mm -hmm. think about how does that person act? How does that person eat? How does that person sleep, train, think, process, uh, like react, respond, like everything, you know, what is their day to day like? Um, because in the process of transforming your physical body and therefore life, you actually become a new version of yourself. You don't go back to who you were. And there has to be, a, and I, I, not a lot of people talk about this, but there has to be an identity shift in order to mm -hmm. become the new version of you. You have to get rid of the old version of you in many ways to become the new person. Um, and people who have, uh, who talk about having imposter syndrome, which I've been guilty of many times in my life. The only way you get over imposter syndrome is by removing the old you and stepping into the new you, you know, and, and I've done that in my own career when I had to like, not just be a coach, but actually be like a CEO, you know, and yeah. it, it was a weird thing for me. But when I accepted, no, that is the role I am now. And I can get rid of this part of me. Like I'll always be a coach, but like, I'm a different type of coach. Now I was able to step into that. And, uh, and this is, you know, something that a lot of people don't want to hear and I don't like sharing it, but I think it's important there is a high uh, percentage of couples that break up when one person has a physical transformation and one person does not because mm -hmm. the person who does not begins to resent the other person because they feel judged or they feel pressured or they feel less than because they're not improving themselves. And the person mm -hmm. who does transform, even though they usually, because it's a couple, don't have any judgment towards them, don't have any ill will, don't have any worry or resentment towards them, they end up feeling shameful or guilty for improving themselves 
because of the attitude of the other person. And a lot of times they split up. And that's what's like, it's crazy because man, it's so much more powerful when, when a couple transforms together or a couple mm -hmm. improves together or works on themselves together. It just, it's so much more powerful. And I think people have to be ready for that. And, and this is why even, you know, when I first met my wife and we started getting serious, like I had a long talk with her because she's naturally thin. She does not do anything. She looks great. And sometimes it pisses me off because I wasn't that way. But the other times <laughs> I'm like, well, I'm married to her. So that's nice. Um, yeah. But I had to have a conversation with her of like, hey, like I weigh my food sometimes. I like, I like bodybuilding. Like I take progress mm -hmm. pictures in my underwear flexing in front of a camera when no one's awake. Like <laughs> I, it's kind of weird. I know. I don't give a shit what you do. I don't care if you do any of it. I don't care if you track your macros. You don't even have no macros are like, there's no, I have no pressure whatsoever, you know, and yeah. having that conversation from the get-go just helps so much more, you know, going into it. Cause then they, they never feel that way. Well, and I think, I think that that's a really important conversation to have. And it's one that, uh, you know, I don't know if you've had it directly with individual clients before, but it's, it's a conversation that I've, I've, I've had with people, but not like so bluntly because, you know, it is a hard one to, to talk about, but if someone's like doing their check-ins and like, it's consistently like, oh, you know, I was consistent until Thursday and then my husband keeps bringing home all these snacks or it wants to go for drinks and, mm -hmm. or this and that. And, um, it is a, it is a really deep, hard conversation to have someone like, yeah, you don't have to get a, a fucking divorce, but like, yeah. you need to have a conversation with your partner that like you have to share that you're in pain right now, like emotional pain or, or uh, mindset pain and, and that you're trying to change that. And if they're not down for that ride or down to make those choices, maybe that's another conversation you have to have. And, and you know, it, it can be a hard transition. So I think that do you, do you have any tips that you maybe give to people to have that conversation with their partner? Who, Cause I think for you, when you met your wife, you were already in it. So it wasn't like a transformation for you. It was like these habits were, and that's the same thing with me. Like I, uh, I know this is probably like, uh, I don't know, not politically incorrect. We're not being that uh, ethical, but like the way I met my wife was she was a client at the gym I worked at. So like mm -hmm. it worked out for the best, but yeah. like, so I really knew she was into fitness, but I don't think she fully at face value knew like how into it I was. So then that was, that was a conversation that we had. And we also had that conversation about how we want to raise our son and communicate fitness and nutrition to him, where it's not like a obsessive thing. It's something that we do to really know it's good for us. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I guess the short question would be, have you given tips to clients of yours, like how to initiate that conversation with their partner, maybe? Yeah, hundred percent. And I will say that like for people listening, know that I, I think I can speak for you on this too. And like, we both understand that it's easier said than done coming from us because, you know, I can go to a family event and be like, no, I'm good. I'm going to pass on that. And then they're like, they can crack a joke. And I'm, I can be like, well, my abs pay the bills. And then everybody like laughs. <laughs> and then it's like, oh, okay. You know, and then it's over. Yeah. There's no like, oh, come on, man. You're too serious. It's like, oh yeah, well, touche. Like he's, he's actually fucking correct. <laughs> Him being yeah, fit yeah. is part of his job. So it is easier said than done. And I, and I tell people that all the time, because I'll say like, I'll talk about consistency in the gym and I'll even say like, by the way, I don't expect you to be as on point as me. I step out this office door and I'm in a gym. I can't fuck mm -hmm. that up. Like, so I get yeah. it. But with these conversations, I always tell people, I start with saying like, Hey, nobody actually thinks being healthy, having discipline or being like lean and fit is stupid. Nobody thinks mm -hmm. that's dumb. So anybody who is putting you down or making you feel dumb or guilty or, or anything for doing so and committing that and investing your time and effort into that is really just insecure because they're not doing the same, which is fine. It's understandable. Mm -hmm. It's a subconscious thing. They don't realize they're doing it, but they will poke fun or joke at you because they know that they haven't done it. They know that they don't have the commitment. And you can tell the difference because I have some friends when I was getting into this that would do that. And they were those people. They were the people that are like really uncommitted, not really doing much. And it was like, they would poke fun because they weren't doing it and they felt insecure. Mm -hmm. And then other ones that were doing a lot in other areas of their life. So they were like, oh, dope, dude, more power to you. I'm going to drink this beer. Mm -hmm. Like, they just don't care. They're like, what you eat yeah. doesn't make me shit. So fuck it, whatever, you know? Yeah. And so you yeah. can see the difference. And so knowing that it's easier to have a conversation. And, and then the second thing is that anybody who actually cares about you won't shut you down if you just actually confront the issue. So just say, you know, I don't feel good in my skin. I don't feel good in my body. I, I, I am a little insecure and, and I want to be healthier. I want to be fitter. I want to get lean. I'm like super motivated right now. So I'm just going to stick to this. And I would just appreciate it if, if you just kind of laid off a little bit. 
mm-hmm. when they give you shit. Yeah. If you say that to anybody who cares about you, I promise you they will go, damn, like, I'm sorry. Like, you're right, dude, you're, you're killing it. Like, that's my bad. Like nobody yeah. ever says like, man, shut up. Like I'm going to still give you shit or, or, or a female or anybody. Like, it's just, it doesn't happen. So know that nobody thinks it's stupid. Know that anybody who cares about you is not going to continue. If you have that actual conversation of saying something like that to them. Um, and then usually from there, it's, it's 10 times easier because you don't feel pressure going in the room because they know, you know, um, and as long mm-hmm. as you're practicing flexible dieting and you're not walking into like a family reunion with a tub wear, like you have nothing to worry about. Like it's your body, it's your life, it's your goals. Um, and it is important to have all of these types of conversations with those around you because it, it, it makes a big difference with your consistency. Even the stuff that you talked about, like we don't talk about calories and stuff like that at home. Like my daughter, like when she eats broccoli, she flexes. Cause she's like, this makes me strong. Right. I'm like, that's right. Yeah. And we just flex at the dinner table and enough said, you know, and if she doesn't want to have broccoli and she wants a pizza, cool. Have some fucking pizza. But like yeah. a lot of times she'll willingly have the broccoli too. Cause she wants to see me flex. She wants to like, she was just telling me to feel her muscles the other night at dinner. It was hilarious. And she kept doing it. <laughs> But it has nothing to do with fat loss, has nothing to do with being lean. Like we watch our mouths when it comes to saying things about our own bodies or what we want to see different or anything like Mm -hmm. that, because kids pick up on that shit, you know, say like, there's nothing wrong with talking about your physique and wanting to improve it, but save it for, you know, a separate private conversation. Yeah. I mean, you hit on a lot of stuff, man, that like is really, really important to talk about. And it's, that's why it's cool to have these conversations because sometimes as a coach uh, i'm sure i'm sure at this point in your career maybe not as much but i know at my where i'm at which is crazy because i'm like i've literally been a trainer full-time for like nine years now so it's not like i'm like a newbie <laughs> but like i still have those moments where i'm like i just want to make sure like i'm having these conversations right or my mind is in the right spot so when i have these conversations with other coaches it's nice to get that reassurance but one thing that i actually just talked about with a client today was how you know a lot of people are hesitant to bring up fitness or nutrition in front of their kids in any way. And I said to her, I said, you know, the reason why is because you tend to just associate it with a negative. I'm on this diet because I don't like myself because I need to lose weight. I'm doing this workout because I hate myself and I need to change my body. If you flip the script on that and you view nutrition as something that you're doing for yourself, that's improving your life and it's not a chore, it's a much healthier conversation to have with your kids. Like, why wouldn't you I'm not, and I'm not talking about calories and macros, but like, yeah, why wouldn't you tell your daughter, Hey, when you eat broccoli, it's going to make you strong. Like, why wouldn't you say that? Why wouldn't you encourage them to exercise? But it's because we're always associating it with something negative. So if you go to like a a family gathering, it's also on you, like how you have the conversation. If you go into it going, I can't eat that because I'm on a diet. Like no one wants to hear that shit. But if you just don't take any and don't make a deal about it then it won't be a deal like most mm-hmm. people won't even notice whether you had a cookie or not yeah so it's it, it little things like that i think those mindset hacks that's where i think those are the things that with one-on-one coaching we can actually tackle with people as opposed to just what's the perfect amount of carbs i should be eating it's like this is the actual stuff that makes a difference in your life could not agree more man 100 percent um, so uh, yeah, I guess I, like I said, I don't want to take up too much of your day. Um, one thing, I, a couple of things I wanted to go over, um, just to get your opinion on, uh, like I said, Cody's worked with hundreds of people and you have a team of people who have also worked with hundreds of people. So across that spectrum, if you're talking to like the everyday general population person who maybe works out a couple of times a week, is trying to get in shape, trying to make these changes, what would you say are some of the most common mistakes you see as far as workouts go and nutrition? So maybe like just a couple of each. Yeah. Um, man, it's, it's, uh, it's funny how like, a uh, like that whole conversation so far, we just like, is like a tangent of much needed discussion that was not planned, which is. So oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Before we started recording, I said, Hey Cody, like these are like four things I want to talk on. And we literally just started talking about them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I think that, you know, it, it's, it's always hard to boil it down into uh, simple, like one or two main things. I would say like this one kind of applies to training and nutrition though. Um, a big mistake I see people make is, uh, is just like the one size fits all is not the right wording for it, but kind of just like believing black and white answers or believing that there is like a one thing, right? Because, and the reason I say that is because you and I both know people who do low volume strength training and look great. We know people who do high volume strength training, and look great. We know people who do full body, look great upper lower do great crossfit do look look great there's people who just do brazilian jiu-jitsu and look fucking great you know what i mean like 
training is training. And what my professor in college used to say is muscles are stupid. They know tension and resistance. So as long as you're progressively mm -hmm. creating more tension, you'll probably be fine. Um, now, if you want to, like, I'm going to compete in powerlifting and there's like numbers I want to hit. It mm -hmm. gets a little bit more sciencey, right? But like, we're talking gem pop, just want to look better, feel better. Are you pushing your body physically and getting close enough to failure without hurting yourself? Yes, you're good. I don't care what method you use. They all can work as long as you stay safe and as long as you train hard. And the same applies with nutrition, like paleo, carnivore, keto. If, if it's your macros, Mediterranean diet, intermittent fasting, none of them work if there's not a calorie deficit, but all of them work if there is a calorie deficit. So which one's the best? Well, which one works for you? Like if you have gut issues, maybe we go paleo. If you are like rushed in the morning and you have no hormonal issues or stress issues, let's go with intermittent fasting. And I say that just because if somebody has super high stress levels or wonky hormones, mainly females, because their hormone system is a little bit more sensitive to, to nutrients and, and feeding windows, I probably wouldn't go with intermittent fasting, but I know tons of guys who get super lean on it. And I know women who yeah. do too. Um, but the point is, is everything works. So because everything works, we just have to figure out how to make it work for you. And I think um, flexible training and flexible nutrition is, is the key. And it's also one of the biggest mistakes people make is believing that you cannot be flexible, believing that you, uh, like, I mean, you, you went out to dinner with us. I had plenty of drinks and I ate whatever I wanted because I don't do it that yeah. often. There's a balance to be had. You well, you know, know, what, um, know, what's, know what's funny about that? Not to cut you off, but it's funny about that. Cause I, I thought the same thing too. I was like, you know, when we have to dinner, we went out to dinner, we, we each had probably like two, maybe two drinks, maybe three. Um, and we, we all shared appetizers and we each had an entree, right? And that, like, I left the dinner, didn't think twice about what I ate. Like, never was like, oh my God, I screwed up my diet or anything like mm -hmm. that, right? But it's because we're so consistent all the time. But what I do find sometimes, just as like a quick little side thing, is like our, oh, we indulge the little behavior is like very moderate to the average person's behavior at that dinner. Like, yeah. I, you know what I mean? The average person at that dinner made might have been seven drinks deep, three appetizers two appetizers to themselves and a dessert, right? So it's like uh, people need to realize that the more consistent you are, your sort of like, quote unquote, like off track indulgent behavior actually lessens over time because you don't see, you don't uh, like see the benefit as much anymore to just overindulge yeah. on stuff. It's having an inclusive diet instead of an exclusive diet. So the more restrictive you become, the more you you crave and want those things, and then the higher the binge likelihood is, right? So I think that mm -hmm. a big part of finding that balance is, and I used to always say, focus on being ninety percent on point, one hundred percent of the time. Don't try to be one hundred percent of the point because it'll only work ninety percent of the time, and then that ten percent yeah. becomes a binge, you know. Yes. So if we actually factor in ninety percent of the year, for example. I mean, dude, like that's basically taking like a Saturday off. Like I haven't tracked on a Saturday and I don't know how long because even when I did the photo shoot, I just didn't track because I just know like my cues and part of, and, and I even tell my clients this, like who are using macros and we're getting to a goal. They're like, well, you know, I, I, I would, I want to have some flexibility on Saturday, but I want to fit this into this. I'm like, Hey, we're not going to track. And it's It might set us back a few weeks at first because you might overeat and then we have to relose that weight. And then you overeat again and we relose that weight. But if you don't learn how to manage it without the app, we're screwing ourselves in the long run. Let's use the mm -hmm. app. Let's use the GPS to get you to the results as fast as we can. However, we need to take some periods of time, whether that's a diet break or a Saturday or whatever it is without using the app so that you don't only rely on it. You need to be able to listen to your internal cues. Um, so I agree hundred percent. And I think uh, the big, like I would add that to the list of the big mistakes people make is being hundred percent on point and trying to be hundred percent on point. Cause it's just impossible, like you know, the all or nothing approach. Yep. And, yeah. and so, however, one of the other things that I would put on that list of the reasons why people consistently don't get results through a nutrition perspective is that they're too flexible. So there's people who go too hard and they go hundred percent. And then there's people who like they're eating Chipotle for lunch every day because it fits their macros, but I'm sorry. Mm -hmm what chipotle one serving of chicken is is not what mike behind the counter is giving you every time who knows what his scoop is if he's in a good mood you might be getting a little extra beef you know you <laughs> yeah. avocado whatever you don't know so it's inconsistent so i think like um results kind of live in this this middle area this gray area this balance between structure and in dare i say rigidness and mm -hmm. flexibility because without flexibility you go batshit crazy you cannot adhere mm -hmm. to the diet long term and with too much rigidness you have no flexibility no freedom and you still go batshit crazy but like if you don't have some structure in rigidness you have zero discipline and you don't know when to stop being flexible and you don't know how to consistently make progress because your metrics are all out of whack
right? Mm-hmm. So we need mm-hmm. both of them equally. And I think most people in the industry, and it's because There's, uh, and this is what has been, I would say the hardest part from a marketing perspective to build my company has been that my marketing fails to be sexy and and I bank Mm -hmm. on being transparent and real. And that's why people really like our stuff, but it takes longer to grow because there's some people that are like discipline, don't drink for a hundred days straight, like (laughs) fuck everything, ice baths in the morning. Like, it's just so much. You're like, God, dude, like, yeah. I'm okay. And then there's like these people that are like intuitive eating, like you can just feel your way to fat loss. And it's like, no, you can't, <laughs> you need discipline yeah. and you need a push. Like, so there's this middle ground, you know? Um, and so I think like, yeah, like number one would be definitely like people just trying to be too on point. Number two would be um, uh, people being too flexible. Um, and then number three would be the first thing I said, um, w- which is really just like, thinking that there's like a one approach, like there's a diet that actually like, no, they all come down the same thing. Science is boring and it all boils down the same shit. Um, And honestly, if I had to add anything else to that whatsoever, it would honestly probably be lack of investment or patience. I think a lot of people look at um, coaching as an expense, but it's an investment. Mm -hmm. And if you, you know, like we get on coaching calls with people. And one of the first things we tell them most times is like, Hey, we're not the cheapest. Like, I'm just going to be honest with you. Um, But there's a reason we're not the cheapest. Like, we give good service, you know, like it's, it, I mean, you were talking about at the beginning, how many hours we spend coaching every week mm-hmm. that costs money, you know, but the difference is, is that once we're done, you, you won't need to come back. And the only reason you would come back is if you have a new goal or you never left because you enjoy the accountability. But the reality is, is, is people need human connection. People need true guidance. People need skin in the game, which is putting your own hard earned money down for a result because mm-hmm. if you don't do that. I promise if you pay for a $5 group challenge or like a $30 fat loss challenge from a magazine, not a magazine website nowadays, but like yeah, <laughs> that dated my fitness career a little bit. But like, <laughs> if you do that, you're not going to get results. You just have, you don't have any skin in the game. Like you have to invest money and I promise it, it pays off 10 times more. Um, and that, I think that's a big mistake people make. And, and on the training side, it's very similar, just kind of flipped around, right? Like there's the people who um, they overanalyze the methods. Like I said before, like it all can work. You have to figure out what you enjoy the most because that's what's going to make mm-hmm. you work the hardest, be motivated to get in the gym consistently and probably progress the fastest because you're you're amped up about training. Um, I would say number two with training is going to be um, really like doing the boring work, like the repeatability. I think a lot of times people want change so much. CrossFit made this really popular, but I, I try to remember remind people that CrossFit's a sport and it's a sport mm-hmm. of being really good at randomness. If you really think about it, yeah, like, yeah, it's that's the very most, true. it's the most concurrent sport you could possibly do. Now, granted, I have, um, I have uh, a client, a nutrition client. I don't do his training competing in water the next week. I have another client who's a CrossFit fit masters, uh, games athlete. Like I, I have coached plenty of people in this sport. I find it fucking awesome watching, but yeah. if you're an everyday person that is just trying to lose weight or anything, it's not going to, it's not going to work like as well as something else will. Um, So you, you have to repeat the same things over and over again, because that's the only way you Mm -hmm. progress, right? Like if you were to um, learn Spanish in week one, you, you got Rosetta stone and you started reading through it. And then week two, you got a different company and it's a video one. It's not a book. And then week three, you go to a class, like you're not gonna learn shit because it's a different teacher. And then you go try, then you go try German for a little while. Exactly. Yeah. You you (laughs) can't do that. Like, you got to do the same thing over and over again. Right. Um, now you don't do it forever, but there is a, and we know this as a whole different conversation, you know, should your training block be three weeks or four weeks or six weeks, they can all work. But like, the point is, is you got to, it's a skill. So you got to progress it over time. I think Mm -hmm. people fail to do that because they want change so much, um, especially in today's world. Right. Um, and those are probably the biggest. And I mean, obviously consistency and adherence applies to all those. If you don't do those things properly, you're not going to be consistent with it. Um, the last thing I would throw out there for gen pop for training is being too married to the the compound lifts. Um, and this is coming from somebody who does bench squat deadlift. I'm going to mm-hmm. do a powerlifting competition for my first time. So obviously in that regard, I have to, <laughs> if I don't, then yeah, it's like, you, you know, you learn German and then you go to like a Spanish speaking contest. That doesn't work. Like <laughs> yeah. I have to do it, but for an everyday person, trap bar, safety bar, dumbbells, kettlebells, landmine, leg press. Like there's a million ways. Like, there's patterns, squat, hinge, press, do that mm-hmm. and do it. That is in a way that's suited for your mechanics, your experience, your strengths, your weaknesses and balances, limb lengths, all those kind of things, individualize it. And you can save yourself from a lot of injury and speed up the progress much faster. Um, like there's nothing like granted, I know there's something cool about 
like I admit it, like if I had to keep one compound lift, it would be the deadlift. Cause there's just something about pulling a heavy barbell four that just feels fucking good, but yeah, man, I don't have to do it for a good body composition, especially. Yeah. And that's the point. Absolutely. And I think that, I think sometimes people get lost in that whole like functional training uh, rabbit hole where they think functional training means like you know, standing on a BOSU ball, doing a one arm press mm-hmm. on one leg. And it really, it just means like, if you had to like pick something up off the ground and help your friend move, like, would you ever do it? Like without hurting yourself. And that's where, that's where for the everyday person, some of this stuff fits in is just like, what are, what do you want in your day-to-day life? Like, do you want to be the mm-hmm. person who, if someone asks you to, to help them move, you're like, I can't do that. I have a bad back. Do you want to be the person who like, if you're running around with your kid outside, you're getting winded and you can't like, those are the things that you have to think about. And I, uh, talking about like new identities, I'm sure you can relate to this a ton. Is like when you become a parent, it's like a whole new identity and you have a whole yeah. new set of priorities. Right. So like, yeah, I'm still a, a gym bro, gym rat. I want to look jacked when I go to the pool, but like at the end of the day, like my number one priority is being around as long as I possibly can to spend as much time with my son as possible. 100%. So yeah. So like for me, I'm not, I'm just, I appreciate what fitness and nutrition does for me for that long-term goal. So the idea of like, which I know to me and you sounds crazy, but like the idea of like quitting or stopping doing it is like so foreign and weird to us. But for the average person, how many times have they gone six, 12, you know, months, years without stepping into a gym, without picking up a dumbbell. And I think Mm -hmm. across the board with everything you talked about, whether it comes to life or just fitness and nutrition, you just got to stay in it and keep trying, keep going. And it'll improve naturally along the way. Like what's the what's the best way to learn Spanish is you move to someplace where everyone speaks Spanish, you have to pick it up. So yeah. like your environment goes a long way. And that's goes back to what we were talking about before, like having those conversations with people you hang out with a lot, your friends, your partner, you know, yeah. and making sure that you're uh, developing this new identity. I, you know, in like, speaking of like functional fitness, just like a, a little side note on that. I started looking at it much differently once I did have a kid. <clears throat> and for people listening, I think you should approach your goal for yourself first and then think of how could this be more functional for me in my life? And, and like, so for me, for example, like I got to hit a step count or I'm trying to burn more calories. I'm going to put a weight vest on. And people are like, oh, does that burn like way more calories? I'm like, honestly, probably not. Why are you doing it? Yeah. Because my daughter always wants to be riding on my shoulders, pick it, picked up, like carrying her, throwing her around it makes it 10 times easier to do it because I got 40 pounds strapped to my vest, like, and I'm just going to walk yeah. and ruck around. Um, I was, uh, we were doing Zercher carries and like Zercher carries are great for you. You know, like I, there's other ways I can work my core in a functional way, but I, I put uh, like over a hundred pounds in this sandbag and I was doing it. And I was like, why are you doing it? Cause that's it, dude, it's hard holding that like 120 pounds. Yeah. It's like, why are you doing that? And I'm like, because you know, it's only a little bit less than you and Blakely combined in weight. And if a burning house is ha- like, if we're in a house and it's burning and I literally, it was so like, she thought I was crazy and I kind of am, but I was like, what if like there was a burning house and a beam dropped down and hit you in the head and you're unconscious and I got to pick you guys up and I got to fucking get out of this house. Yeah. This is how I'm doing it. <laughs> and she was like, you're yeah, I'm doing it right now. But it, I'm like, it's funny well, that you said it's, it's funny that you say that the other day I was carrying my son just like that. So if anyone doesn't know a Zercher carry is like picture in like a movie if someone's, uh, you know, or if, or if like a groom's carrying a bride to like their honeymoon, like that sort of carry. It's like you carry a sandbag, you do it with a barbell. I was carrying my son like that. And just naturally, because again, like we're just psychos, like I'm engaging my core and I'm just like walking like a, like, like, uh, like I'm doing yeah. a Zercher carry. And I remember thinking like, yeah, like if I couldn't do this, like that would, that would be weird. Like it would be weird to not be able to do this, this, and, or if this was so physically taxing for me, but people deal with that every day, man. Like, it's just like running up this, like having to jet up the stairs or like you have a kid, like my, my son will sprint towards the street and I got to like, like at, at the drop of a dime, go run after him. So um, just as we kind of wind, wind down uh, one thing I wanted to kind of just touch on just briefly would be, you know, if you were talking to, you know, Gen Pop or have now have access to literally every single person in the fitness industry at the, you know, the swipe of their thumb, you know, what are some tips you would give them about how to navigate as a consumer? Cause you're being hit with all this stuff every day, all these fad diets, these workout programs, these girls in sports bras, guys with six packs. And, you know, how do you, how would you navigate finding like, you know, someone you can trust? It's actually really, really easy for me to break down. Um, Mm -hmm. I understand why it's very difficult for the everyday person to figure out, um, because it's 
even even that functional thing I said, like that's not easy for the normal person to do. It was, I'm doing that finisher challenge right now. And somebody asked me that too, like, like, you know, how does this pertain to your goals or like you trying to lose fat? And I'm like, no, it's just, I just don't want to do it. So I do it because it's like mentally challenging. So the functionality yeah. of that has nothing to do with movement, it has everything to do with my mindset because now in the morning, I'm not going to hit snooze because that's, yeah. you know, it's easier to do. Um, so like, I'm a fitness professional. It's easy for me to see these things. Um, just like if a plumber came to my house and tried to like, tell me what was going on, I'd be like, dude, I have no idea what you're talking about right now. Cause I don't know anything about pipes or systems or anything like that. Um, so it comes easy to me. And, and the reality is, is you need to find somebody, number one, who, who does not speak in absolutes. So as I was saying before, there is no one diet paleo. Like if anybody's pulled some guruism, like paleo or, or this protocol, or like if they say this thing is the best or the only or the fastest or anything like that, they're full of shit. Like, that's not true. There's yeah. a million ways to skin a cat. Um, and I, that's the weirdest saying, cause I don't know why you'd want to skin a cat, but like it's, uh, <laughs> every time I say that, I'm like, God, that is weird. But um, that is a, is a easy red flag. You know, mm -hmm. the, the green light that you want to like, or the green flag or whatever that you're looking for is for somebody who says it depends. So if you're looking for influencers, if you're looking for information online, if somebody answers with it depends and then follows it up with stuff, that's a good sign. If they just say it depends and they don't give you the answer, they know it, it depends on something, but they don't know what the fuck it depends on. So they're not knowledgeable, yeah. but it's extremely difficult for me to give a response to a client or an individual or anybody like that, because I cannot just say, yeah, or this works or, no, it, it has to be like, well, it depends on this or this or this, or if you were in this situation, or if you weighed this much, or if your diet was like this, or if the timeline looked like this, like there's so many variabilities with the human body in fat loss and muscle growth and, and training and all this stuff that it depends on a lot. So like a really good thing that you should be looking for is somebody who does not speak in absolutes or black and whites. And they say it depends a lot. And if you find those two things, you're going to find somebody who, who truly values the science, you know? Um, which is another thing too. If you hear people say like research shows or like most evidence points to, or like in my experience, I've seen, they're just good ways of setting up statements that are very honest. You know, um, we say research shows or, or we've seen in the research or from the, the science I've read up on all the time, because everything I say, there's a filter for it. And if I don't know, I'm going to go find out and then I'm going to come back to you. So I think that the main things you should be looking for are people who do use evidence and science who say it depends a lot and uh, who don't speak in black and whites. That's really good advice, man. Yeah. And that's, that's one thing that I've, uh, I've noticed too. And, uh, I, I always apologize for it when I'm talking to a client It's like, uh, sorry, I just rambled for 10 minutes for a very simple question, but I just wanted to make sure I explained it to you. Like I was doing a, a zoom call today with uh, the staff at a, at a local school district. And someone just asked me like, how many carbs should they be eating? And like 10 minutes later, I still hadn't given them a specific number because I had explained to them why carbs matter, how many calories per gram, why you shouldn't be worrying too much about it if it's blah, blah, blah. And, and it's it's very, very true what you're saying. And uh, yeah, I just I, I hope this conversation helps people if, they, if they're listening to it. Just understand like if you're if you're looking to get in shape and you're you know on the fence about what path you should take, you don't have to work with me. You don't have to work with Cody. But like if you're going to work with someone, make sure it's someone who's honest and gives you nuance and if they do have long form content like a podcast or youtube videos or articles like read them watch them listen to them see how they talk and what they're talking about and you can i think most people have a pretty good bullshit meter they just internally want to believe the bullshit sometimes mm -hmm. yeah 100 percent. and i think the, you made a really good point at that last point is like um Finding people who have blogs, podcasts, like long form content is, is really, really good because you can't write a long blog. You can't talk on this topic for an hour straight or do any of those things if you don't know what you're talking about and you don't care about this stuff. So mm -hmm. that's a really, really good filter. Um, and I ultimately think people cave into the bullshit because the, uh, the hope and idea of there being a quick, fast, cheap, simple solution is always going to be so appealing that we're going to like, you know, we're going to try, we're going to like go for it, even if we know it's probably unlikely. Um, and I don't think that'll ever change. Most people, I think, have to do that before they, you know, I, I can't tell you how many people have come to us. Like we actually did surveys with a bunch of people, um, hundreds and hundreds of clients. And uh, we asked, how, how long have you been trying this before coming to us? And the average answer is between two and four years. So like people, you know, they come to us after they've tried it all quote unquote 
like yeah you know yeah you have it. like how but, like how many how many quick fixes added up to five, five years of trying exactly, like you know yeah. you, you took the longer path without trying to take the longer path anyway yeah. and most likely spent more money you know so wait oh did dude, dude way more it's yeah it's it's very very crazy and uh i mean this is stuff that i can honestly like i can shoot the shit on it for for a very long time but like i said yeah. man, i know i know you're super super busy so i don't want to i don't want to keep too long i did want to touch on one thing though that is not going to be a long tangent but it's a very it's a very just a fun fact and i noticed it when i when i started following you on instagram like years ago is we literally got married on the same exact day <laughs> like not even like not just the same date but the same year and day so it's okay. august 10th 2019 right yep yep i just remember yep. it because i think i commented on a post that you made like a couple years ago but i initially found you from uh jordan syatt's podcast and i listened to it back in like 2018 2019 whenever you were on it and back right. when like you your business was boom boom like that yeah. way back then so yeah. um before tailored and stuff so i started i started following you then man and, and i've always respected you and i've i've applied a lot of the stuff you've put out as a coach to help my clients too and uh speaking of like being real and nuanced and and talking about the long-term process like when i did your business seminar one of the the things I appreciated about it was, uh, you know, I, I had skin in the game. I, I paid money. I flew out. We were there for two days and, and you took a lot of time and spent a lot of things. But at the end of the day, it was, here's what to do to build your business over the next like five, 10 years. Right. It wasn't a quick fix. Mm -hmm. And I've actually been applying that stuff and working through it. But I think to relate it back to the listener, if someone is promising you like quick fixes, that's usually a good red flag. Yeah. And I was very, I was very appreciative that you're honest with us and just like, Hey God, like this is going to take a while, but if you do this hard shit, like your business is more sustainable. And, uh, it was a wake up call for me, man. Cause like I had been through business coaching before that had helped me a lot, but it kind of put me on a sprint with no sustainability and, uh, yeah. you've helped me kind of build more sustainability in my business. So I appreciate that. I love it, man. Yeah, no, I'm happy to hear that. It's, uh, that's why we had no upsell at the end. You know, it's like, Hey, this is this is what it takes. It's going to take you a while. I have nothing else to give. And, and I, you know, I tell people all the time, they, I, I've had a, a lot of guys, um, and I don't say it's in a way to like impress anybody, but just impress upon, like, say like you're, you kind of have like my ideal physique. Like that's what I'm after. Like, what do I got to do? And it's like, man, I've been training for 12 years straight, like yeah. every week, you know, and I'm not saying you have to train 12 years straight. Cause, but trust me, there was years of not good sleep there was a couple years in the beginning of fucking up and trying to find out the right path like i could have mm -hmm. saved time on it um but regardless the point is it takes time it takes time and consistency with anything in life like yeah simple. oh no yeah man i totally get that i uh i'm i started working out i'm 32 started working out when i was like 14 this is fucking it was 18 years and i tell clients all the time i spent the first 10 years doing it wrong so that I could now learn how to teach you to do it right. So it doesn't take you 10 years <laughs> to figure yep. it out. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then just real quick, man, is where can people find you? Where, where's the best way to access you? And if you wanted to plug anything that you got coming up. Yeah. So uh, on Instagram at Cody McBroom, uh, we uh, we're on, we're, I'm posting on there every day. We're posting on the at tailored coaching method, uh, Instagram every single day. Tailored life podcast is the podcast. We drop two of those a week. Um, and, uh, we have tailored life apparel recently launched. We're going to be dropping a new, uh, a new lineup in mid February should be the date that that comes out. We're going to be launching like dates and stuff soon. Um, but I always say, it's always funny when I get on podcasts and I say anything coming up, you want to plug and I'm like, no, nah, man, I do the same thing. It's just consistency. So we coach consistency. Yeah. yeah, in content. So if you want free content, tailorcoachmethod.com, that's where it's all at. So awesome, man. Well, I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Absolutely, brother. Absolutely.